Okay, so in today's uh, video, we want to go through the regulation of uh, blood pressure. And to understand that, the first thing that we should learn about is the receptors. We have learned about uh, sympathetics and parasympathetics and how that sympathetics release no epinephrine and uh, parasympathetics release SDH. But what we didn't go into detail of was the various receptors that you can find. So in the sympathetics, you have alpha-1 and alpha-2 uh, that, when stimulated by norepinephrine, uh, lead to a contraction and of the smooth muscle, and this leads to constriction or getting smaller uh, diameter vessels, whilst uh, beta-2 and beta-1 will actually lead to dilation. Uh, when SDH binds to M receptors, you find that it will lead uh, to the production of nitric oxide within the endothelium. Then the nitric oxide will move into um, the smooth muscle, causing them to relax, and this will cause vascular dilation. Having that in mind, we also note that um, in order for blood pressure to be regulated, we have two major regulation factors, which are neurological, and the other one is dependent on the renin angiotensin pathway. Um, so in appreciating this, we will observe that the renin angiotensin pathway dependent one is for uh, long-term uh, long regulation, while the neurological one, which is on the screen right now, is more or less short term. And how does this happen? We're going to observe it from the increased blood pressure response as well as decrease. Um, so when there is an increase in blood pressure, what will happen is um, there will be sensations of the baroreceptors that are on the iota as well as on um, uh, the carotid sinus. So when these, so the carotid sinus, I have placed it uh, here, and then so when this sense that there is that increase in pressure, and how will they sense the distension or the stretch will actually open up sodium channels, they'll stimulate sodium uh, channels, and this will allow an influx of sodium causing an initiation of an action potential. And you will see that through cranial nerve number nine from the carotid, all right, cranial nerve number nine and cranial nerve number 10 from uh, the iota, so nine and 10, you will observe that action potentials will go to the nucleus of tractus solitarius. Once there, that is when the action starts, because the nucleus of tractus solitarius will give a three-fold action. And the first one we're going to see is the stimulation of what is known as the cardio-inhibitory centers. These are another set of nuclei within the medulla. So this set of nuclei, when stimulated, they're going to send action potentials through the vagus of cranial nerve number 10 uh, to the SA node. And we already learned about this pathway. And once uh, that happens, you will see that there will be less um, action potentials that are being initiated by uh, the SA node. So from here, we said it will stimulate the CIC. But from the CIC, what's happening, and I put in dotted lines because it's inhibitory, what's happening is that it's going to inhibit put a minus there, and it's through cranial nerve number 10 again, it's going to inhibit the SA node. And the SA node will then uh, release less impulses in any given uh, time. And so what will happen once the SA node uh, releases uh, less, it means the heart rate is going to go down, okay? So if the heart rate goes down, you're going to reduce SBP. Okay, and uh, the overall mean arterial pressure will also be reduced. So that's one thing. But remember that uh, BP is also diastolic, so you don't want only to reduce the SBP. So heart rate, if you then 
go back to what it really does, what does it do? Uh huh. Uh huh. So it reduces feeling time, and you're going to have a decrease in EDB, and you're going to have a decrease in stroke volume. Yeah. So if you're going to have a decrease in stroke volume, then what will happen? Just give it 30 seconds. Yeah, so it means that when the heart is actually pumping, it's going to pump out less blood, meaning during the time that the, the heart is in cystal, you have less uh, pressure in the system. That is why you have a decrease in systolic blood pressure. Awesome. So what's the next thing that's going to happen? So from the NTS, it would then inhibit the nucleus uh, um, of the cardiac accelerators, so, so the NCA, nucleus uh, cardiac accelerators, so it's going to inhibit, all right, so because it's inhibiting, um, I'm going to use the next color so that we have sort of, okay, it's going to inhibit, so you're going to have a minus there. So once it inhibits this, what, what, why is it inhibiting this? Because what this normally does, and I'm going to take you down with it, is that normally it gives off sending fibers to the lateral horn, which I've already drawn. So the lateral horn is this one here. So normally it will give off these descending fibers to the lateral horn, okay? And then through the lateral horn, it's going to go through um, to the sympathetic ganglion. And in the sympathetic ganglion, it's normally going to uh, stimulate uh, the next uh, nerve. And when it stimulates the next nerve, these release, or oh, these are the sympathetic, and then release um, NE. Uh, on the SA node, and normally they would accelerate it. So if you are inhibiting this pathway, it means all of this is not happening. So if you are reducing the acceleration of the SA node, it means that you are helping reduce the blood pressure, which is normally being detected, which is being detected now as high. All right, so again, I'm saying when this is inhibited, when the NCA is inhibited, nitric, um, uh, not nitric oxide, I beg your pardon, but the norepinephrine influence is reduced, and therefore the heart rate is further slowed down. Awesome. The next one is what's going to happen on uh, one more nucleus here. So the NTS also... Uh, moves on to the basal motor center. Now, this area is also inhibited. Okay, so if it's inhibited, let's look at another color here. All right, so it's also inhibited. So why, why are we bothered about it? What does it normally do? So what it normally does is it also has descending fibers, okay? Um, it also has descending fibers, but let's go step by step. Uh, it will descend, go through uh, similar, similarly, uh, like we talked about in the NSA um, lateral horn, and then it's going to go to the sympathetic ganglion, and then this sympathetic ganglion has got several other components um, that it has a sympathetic outflow to. First of all, we have we can start with the arterial component, this, which is this one. So in the arterial component, we see that it will give out no epinephrine. All right. Now, no epinephrine. Uh, here, we saw that there's alpha-1 and alpha-2. So on the vessels, there's alpha-1, alpha-2. So it, will, it, it naturally leads to uh, 
constriction, which leads to high pressure. But if we are inhibiting this, it, it will result in vasodilation. Okay? So if it is resulting in vasodilation, this will increase the amount of blood going through the arterioles to the vena side. Okay? So naturally, it's supposed to constrict. Okay? Normally, it's supposed to constrict. If it constricts, it means there is more blood on the arterial side. If there's more blood on the arterial side, it means more pressure on the arterial side because TPR has also increased. Yeah? So it means that the DBP will normally be increased by this pathway. But if we see that um, the alpha 1, okay, the alpha 1s are no longer being uh, contracted, are no, are no longer causing contraction, then you are opening up the arterial component. So if you're opening up this component, what will happen is there will be more blood going this way. So if there's more blood going that way, you're reducing the amount of pressure in the arterial tree. If you're reducing the amount of pressure in the arterial tree, you are therefore reducing DBP. Again, normally it will cause constriction. Then there will be not much going on, going through. If there's not much going through, it means that there will be increase in the arterial pressure, even when the heart is relaxed. But if we start inhibiting this, it means that now we are causing dilation, all right? We are not causing constriction anymore, so blood will pass. And if blood is passing through, it means you're reducing the pressure in this tree, arterial tree. And because of that, it means that the pressure at rest is being reduced. That means the diastolic blood pressure is being reduced. So that is what's happening on the arterial component. What about the venous side? Um, so on the venous side, normally, so this is venous. Let's look at the normal. Normally, what is supposed to happen is there's supposed to be constriction. Once there is constriction, it will lead to increased venous return to the heart. If there's an increase in venous return, it will mean that the amount of blood being uh, pushed out of the heart will increase, the stroke volume will increase. So this way you are increasing uh, systolic blood pressure. Okay, so if now you are removing this pathway, there's no longer constriction that is going on, it means now the venous return will be reduced. If the venous return is reduced, stroke volume will be reduced. If stroke volume is being reduced, then the systolic blood pressure is being reduced. Okay, that's what's happening on the venous side. We also have a third one here which is the adrenal gland, okay? So in the adrenal gland, the adrenal gland literally puts off nitri, uh, puts off, no, epinephrine, no, epinephrine into the system, okay? So if you are reducing the amount of no epinephrine in the system, it means that not, not much of the constriction will be going on and, uh, the same story we told here on the venous side and on the arterial side will that be happening. Okay, so uh, that is what is happening uh, when there's a, an increase in blood pressure you want to reduce. So it will reduce it by making sure that the constriction of the, making sure, that, first of all, that the heart rate reduces. You are going to reduce SBP. Uh, and then if you are going to then uh, dilate the arterioles, you're going to increase the amount of blood going out of the arterial system, and therefore you are going to uh, decrease DBP. And also, if you are going to uh, not constrict, 
the venous system, it means you're reducing the venous return. If there's no venous return or the venous return reduction, there will be a SBT uh, reduction. All right, so you would say that the opposite would happen if there was a reduced uh, BP, yeah? So if there's a reduced BP, there would be no stretch here. Okay, let's get another color. Um, maybe we could use red. Okay, there will be no stretch happening here. So if there's no stretch happening in the aorta uh, or the carotid sinus, it means that the NTS will not be stimulated. So there won't be stimulation happening on the NTS. If there's no stimulation happening in the NTS, several things will happen. Number one, the vagal activity is reduced. So whatever was happening from the CIC here is reduced. Okay, so there's no more reduction of the heart rate there and um, we'll have it then go up because we want more uh, cardiac output. Now remember what that might lead to. Okay. Then secondly, the nucleus or uh, uh, cardiac accelerator will remain uninhibited, uninhibited. So if this doesn't happen, there's no inhibition, it means that the NCA is going to stimulate uh, the sympathetic ganglion, which will then release uh, no epinephrine, which will then increase uh, the activity of the SA node. Awesome. And then it will mean that this inhibition is also not happening. So the vasomotor is also going to continue uh, doing its work. First of all, it's going to cause further constriction, which will then give more pressure in the arterial tree and increase DBP. Okay, on the venous side, it's going to cause constriction, and this will increase the venous return, and thus increase uh, stroke volume, increasing SDP. All right, then we'll also have enough epinephrine going on uh, around the system, causing um, a similar uh, constrictive um, uh, effect on both uh, the venocide and the arteriocide. All right, in the next one, we'll be looking at the renin-angiotensin system.